falló Fui yo el que no creí Hello, welcome one more time. Yeah, we are so good, so happy to be here and enjoying with, in this transmission today with the band here. We are really enjoying it. The music was amazing. And like we, they are singing, God never fail us. Yeah, this is so good. One more time. This is another transmission for La Gran Casa in English. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And we want to invite you to, to be here and to enjoy this time of worship that we want to have. And um, today is going to be a, a really good transmission because we have a lot of things to share with you. Yes. So again, we're going to say hello and invite you to this uh, wonderful uh, place and platform. Is La Gran Casa a Big Family. If 
Wow, it's so good to be in the presence of the Lord, enjoying the music. Thank you one more time for this band that we have here in the church, in La Gran Casa. This is so good for us. Yes, we, ha we have a fantastic time of worship. Yeah, today we have a very good topic to speak. But before, before that, we want to see a little video that this is uh, someone that she's part of us. She is, she's part from La Gran Casa, but not here in Corrientes. She is going to say that. But please take a seat and enjoy this video. Hello, I'm Noelia Mereles. I'm from Reconquista in Santa Fe, but I belong to La Gran Casa de Llaneda, what I call my big family. Well, I love English, and since I've started to study this language, I have the feeling that it has a bigger purpose in my life than just to speak or to teach. And today, thanks to this platform, I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to tell my testimony and to take the Word of God to the entire world. Well, since I met Jesus Christ, my life went to a higher level in my economy, my family, my friends. In fact, I have many things to tell you, but the most important point is that I can experience every day, in every moment, the true love. Because that is what God is, His love. And even if I don't deserve it, He loves me, He takes care of me, He's with me in every moment. He wants the best for me, for my life. And that is the most amazing feeling that a person could have. So I encourage you to look for that meeting with God, to have a relationship with Him so that you can live what I've lived. Because God is always waiting for us. He's knocking at our doors to embrace us to forgive us, to fill our hearts with peace and love. So, people, I love you and I send you all my blessings for you. Thank you very much, Noelia. He's from uh, a province here in Argentina, Santa Fe, and uh, we are listening her how was that encounter with Jesus and how God changed she, uh, his, uh, her life. And he, she can knew that, that true love would change her heart and all the things around her. So it's wonderful, one more time, one more time, listen to uh, the testimonies the, about the people who have that encounter with Jesus, and Jesus and the love of God change all the, their lives. So thank you, Noelia, one more time. And we, we want to invite you, if you have testimony, or you can send us a video just for congrats, uh, and you can tell us where you are, where you live in. You can send us your, your testimony, your video, your congrats. So uh, it was amazing here uh, what God is doing in her life. Yeah, thank you very much, Noelia. It's so good. Listen, because uh, we know that the church, the, the message, we are doing it all together. We are a team. We are a, a lot of persons that we are working together to be a part of the Great Commission that is bring the gospel to the nation. So thank you one more time. And in the same way as Akamia was talking, so everybody of us that is a, a few sorry that is watching this transmission, and if you want to send a video or maybe you have something, some needs to pray, or do you want to, if you want to say something, please feel free. You could send us your testimony or whatever you want to say. So today, we're going to speak about a how, this is a so good topic. We're going to, we're going to speak about yes. how important and profound is the moment when we met Jesus. Yes, and it's, it's so interesting that in the video, Noelia is telling us how was the change in her life when she met the love of God. So we wanted to talk about that point, that topic today. Uh, about what, uh, how is, 
how is that that encounter that change in our life after meet Jesus? Yeah, today we, we're going to be talking about this topic, and we say that the, tit the title for this message is a God who transforms lives. So we believe that this is our God. This is the God that we are serving. He could transform every life. For that reason, we want to read uh, in the story in the Bible. We want to read in Acts chapter 9 because there is the story of a man, of a man who when he had this encounter with Jesus, his life was transformed. So uh, in Acts of the Apostle, in the same time we were talking, we have the story of this man that when he met with Jesus, his life was completely changed. Yes. Um, we all have in our, our way of living. Uh, we have some customs with uh, some habits that we have always in our accompanying us. Like, I don't know, maybe we have customs that are good or bad, or maybe they're, they're habits that we don't like and affect our lives. So we want to read the story of Paul, the apostle, and how change uh, his life. And we're going to go to the book of Acts in the chapter 9. And we're going to read that interesting story in the verse 1 at 6. And the Bible says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing our murders, treats again the Lord's disciples. He went to the high, high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he, he found any who belong to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly, suddenly a light from heaven flashes around, he, around him. He fell to the ground and hear a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? He say, I'm Jesus. I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go in into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So in this Bible story, we can see a God that had a plan for Saul. But first, he had to be transformed by the presence of Jesus. And the first thing we can notice in this story is how Saul, that we're going to call it Paul, because in the Bible after his name it, but Paul, how Paul falls to the floor, to the floor and hear a voice. It's good to remember that Paul was a man who had authority over people. But Paul he could recognize the authority of God in Jesus. How many times it is hard for us to recognize the God, God's authority in our lives? Many times we are confronted by God as Paul was, but instead, to, instead of humility in ourselves as he did, we decide to keep going in our own way. So sometimes it's difficult for us to recognize the, the voice of the Lord, recognize the word in the Bible, and to be obedient. And sometimes there's moments, like in the life of Saul or Paul, uh, he was, he was, he, he was uh, sorry, he was uh, uh, going to the Jerusalem to take like prisoners to the people who follow Jesus. He was uh, like a he was persecuting the people to believe in Jesus, so he had that encounter, and maybe he 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 was not looking for something or some change in his his life, but but he has that encounter with Jesus because the purpose of Jesus was more big than the reality that he was living in. Uh, in, in, and also was more big the identity of yeah. uh, souls in that time. Yeah, we could see that in his story, when Paul, when Saul in this time, he went to Jerusalem, 
He was not looking for something. He was not looking for a V with Jesus in the same moment because he was not looking for that. But we could see how God, he, he came in the middle of the way by Jesus and he speak with Paul. And the second thing we can notice in this story is how Paul obeyed what Jesus told him. In the verse 6 of the chapter 9, Jesus tells Paul what to do, and he obeys. We can, we can ask ourselves sometimes how obedient we are uh, at the w uh, word of God. When, when God is talking to us and tells something that we have to do, how obedient we are at that word. Yeah, and, and it's incredible, read and, and think about it in this thing. The, how do you say before, uh, Paul it, it was a man of authority. And he instant, uh, instant recognized the, the authority of God and he obeyed. And he don't say, oh God, I don't, he don't put up excuses and he obey what God is telling him. So this is a really good question, and it's difficult. This is difficult to to have the good answer because uh, how obedient are we to the word of God? Is 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 a question that we have to make like every day. In the Bible, say that Paul obeyed, even though he was weak and could not trust him he, himself, because we could read that he was blind. And what do we do in difficult times? What do we do when we are weak, when we feel like we cannot anymore? Do we turn to God? Do we blindly obey his word? Yes. And we can think about it, how felt uh, Saul in that situation. He cannot see. He cannot not trust in their, his ability, his see. He cannot trust in himself. So the only thing that he can do in this time, in that time, was believe and obey in that voice, in that voice that he was listening. Yeah, so until this time in the, of the story that we are reading, we could see that we have a person that he has authority over people, and he's going to another city to find that people that is in the way to make us a prisoner. But in the middle of that way, Jesus came and is in front of Paul, and this is all the situation that we were talking. But before to, to go and to keep with this story, we want to invite you to, to have a, a time to think about it, to think, is this good for you? Is it, if it is easy for you, trust God. So maybe uh, sometimes for me, it's not so easy. Believe everybody in the world uh, and be obedient. It's not something easy. So... This is good uh, to recognize. We want to invite you to think about it and to take this time of worship that we want to have and enjoy and put in the presence of the Lord everybody that you are thinking that you are living. Let the king of my heart be the mountain when I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. 
What a wonderful moment we have to worship God and think about it, that points that we are talking, and how big, big is the love of God. The, that love can change us, change us and change completely our lives. And this song is so good because God never going to let me down. This is like so profound. It's like the heart of the, of the topic that we are speaking today. God never gonna let us down. Yes, and God is good all the time. All the time, uh, we we have changed, changed, 
uh, opportunity to change and let God transform our lives. Yes. So uh, today we are talking about uh, about this God he, that he could transform his life. And we were talking about some topics, some points. And the first was that um, Paul, Paul falls to the floor and hears a voice. And this is the voice of the Lord that we want to speak today. The second thing that we could not notice in this story is how Paul obeyed what Jesus told him. So it's good to remind that Jesus said to Paul, so get up and go into the city, and then you must know what you have to do. Yes, and the third point, the third thing that we can notice in the story is the grace and the purpose of God over Paul. We can see uh, that God was uh, who have was had a purpose in the life of Paul before he knew it, Jesus. So we're gonna read in the book. Uh, we're gonna read again in the in the book of Acts in the chapter nine, but we're gonna read in the verse ten at at uh, ninety, and we're gonna read in Damascus. There was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Stray Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named, named Saul. For his praying, in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his, his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have, re I have heard many reports about this man and tell, tell all the harms he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come with, uh, here with authority from the chief price to arrest who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show you him how much he must suffer for my name. In the chapter, in the verse 17, then Ananias went to the house, uh, to the house and enter, enters, placing his hand on Saul, he say, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on, on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Im immediately, something like scale fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He get up and, and was baptized, baptized. And after taking some food, he re regaining his strength. Well, this is all the story, the, the second part that we were reading today, uh, in, the, in, the first part, in the first part. And this is so good and interesting how this is the process of a person. This is a, the process of a person that was going to another city to take some people prisoners. So that was the real reason. It could remind that Paul, Paul asked for a letter to go to Jerusalem with authority. And in the middle of that, Jesus came, came and said after all of that, that he is a chosen instrument. So this is so good. And we want to speak in this part of that grace and <coughs> purpose of God over the life of Paul and over every life. Yes, and we can think in so many people in our lives, in our lives uh, too, we can think we sometimes felt like the enemy of God because we have a, a wrong way to live, because there's people to, uh, I don't know, live in the way, in the wrong way. But we, can, we have to know that that way of living they have Paul's God see with love and grace the purpose that he's going to have 
in the kingdom of, of God and to uh, take the gospel of God to the Gentiles. And we can see in the story the big ministry and, and work uh, of Paul's and the story of the Christian. Yeah, and you could seek in the Bible because we have a lot of letters that it was written by Paul. And this story, we can see how God speaks to Ananias and tells him that Paul is an instrument chosen, chosen, sorry, chosen by him to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. It's very important so he, that there's, this is something that important that we want to highlight at this time, and that is the importance to be obedient of those around us. For example, if Ananias had not been obedient, this could not have been part of Paul's transformation process that he was living. So God first spoke to Ananias, and he was afraid, but still he obeyed the word of God. Yes, we can read the answer uh, of Ananias, Ananias uh, to God in that vision. He say, God, I, I listen so many reports about that man. He take like prisoners to the Christians, and uh, that situation, that that miracle in the life of Paul was a little days after the death of Esteban. He was a Christian. He was killed him for his faith, and we can see the the Ananias was afraid to go to that house and talk with, with Saul, and it, it's me and Paul. So he was obedient over, he, he was afraid. Yeah, and this is something that it could happen, everybody of us, it could happen to me, to you, and to you that you are in your home and your city, because it could be bad reports of your life it could be a bad report of my life uh, a couple years ago or, or whatever. Maybe you, you had bad decisions or maybe you had a bad life. And this is a report, that, a negative report. But we could see the grace of God. So in that moment, Jesus, he didn't speak with Paul about the, that report, about why you are doing this. Because uh, in that moment, Jesus was so interesting in speak with Paul and to be able to reach to the heart of that person. And that is the grace and the purpose of God. And the fourth point that we can notice in this story is that how Paul was a totally different person after meeting Jesus. Paul began to preach every day that Jesus was the Son of God. And people said, isn't, the, isn't this the one who was devastating the Christians in Jerusalem? Wouldn't he have came to take us as a prisoners before the chief priest? We could see here how the people was afraid. The people doesn't, did not believe how this person could change. And this is another question for, for say today. Could a person change? Can it change everybody from the from my soul, my heart? It's so difficult to drop some things. Uh, it's it's difficult to change, but if God is in the middle, it is it is possible. Yes, we are talking today about that meeting with God, that meet, that encounter with Jesus, who changed our lives. And maybe you, the people around you, are gonna say. You are not the person who was like that or something like that. You are not the drunkard, uh, the addict. And maybe the persons don't believe in your change. Or maybe the people not in the bad, in bad intentions. But sometimes it came the reminds of the past. But I, 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 we're going to assure you that we, you can change your life if you have that encounter in that meet with Jesus. Yeah, if you have an encounter with Jesus, with Jesus, your life is going to change. Because we cannot have an encounter with Jesus and remain 
the same as before. After his encounter with Jesus, Paul left totally transformed that place. He found his true purpose, and his life was spoken with authority and with the power that we, we can only achieve through the Holy Spirit. So when you find with Jesus, when you have this encounter, your life is going to turn. You're going to find the real purpose of your life. Every gift, every, everything that you have in your life, everything that you love to do it, everything that you enjoy, you have that because it's for a purpose. And God, he's so interesting. And the person, everybody could reach the dream and the purpose that God had put in every heart. Yes. In the Bible, in the text that we, in the verse that we are reading, we can see, we can read the Ananias pray for, for, for Paul in, and like scale says, fell from his eyes and he was filled of the Holy Spirit. And after that, after that moment, he go to the to Jerusalem and he start to talk about that son of God, that Jesus. And of, of course, the people around him was afraid because he uh, was uh, persecuting Christians. But he started to believe and uh, speak about that son of God. So like Javier say, the most important the, the fact that we can see in a person who changed his life is he start to, to, to speak, he start to change, that person start to, to shine in everywhere he go, in, in, your, in your family, in your work, in your, in your school, you show that love that you know first from Jesus. Yes, this is so good, this topic. So we want to invite you one more time. If you could uh, have the Bible, maybe in your cell phone or on your computer, and you could read all the story in, in the Acts, in the book of Acts, the New Testament, and you could read and you could see uh, how, is, how was the life of Paul, how was his ministry, and how after that moment that he was blind, uh, he was full by the Holy Spirit, and that is the reason, and that is the only thing that you need to change your life. So this is something that is true that we want to say that it's, it's so difficult, difficult to change without God and without the Holy Spirit. So this is the key. So if you have a, re a relationship with God, if you have an encounter with Jesus day by day, it's not only one day on the week. It's not only today, Sunday. It's not only when you were maybe a child. No, day by day, you have to be walking by, uh, with God, reading the Bible. So getting into the, this story, and you're going to find the, the real key, the heart of the Bible. And this is the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, your life can be transformed. Um, we are... Today, we are worshiping a God who transforms life. Yes. Yes, and the, the most important message in the ministry, in the life of Paul, it was the, the gospel of God. It was not only for the Jew people. The gospel of God, it's for everybody. He, the, the first uh, people who he go to preach and, and take that message of Jesus, was from the Gentiles. In that moment, we can we can remind that the Gentiles, the 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 Jews, don't think that the Gentiles, uh, the salvation it was for for there there, but Paul's take that message of salvation and love for all the world, uh, all the people. We can read in these times the the letters of Paul, and we can be like uh, hearing God through he, through that man. Yeah, and this is something very important that we want to highlight one more time. And this is the, the big ministry, the big life of Paul. It was, uh, in the beginning, the first step was in the floor. Paul, 
he started his ministry full by the Holy Spirit, but the position, the attitude of Paul was be surrendered by the presence of God, be surrendered by the authority of Jesus. And that is the, the point so important. So today we want to invite you to, to have this encounter, to have this relationship with God, um, to ask Jesus to be in the middle of our lives. So we want to pray. Thank you, Lord, for this story. Thank you because uh, you were talking to our hearts. Thank you because we could see in this story how this person, with it has a lot of authority, he could change his life. In the same way, Jesus, we ask you that you could change our lives. We want to live for you. We want to live for everybody that you have for us. Thank you, Lord, because you are so interested to, to have this encounter with us. Thank you because uh, the Holy Spirit was speaking with us today through this platform, through the Acts in chapter 9, and through the music, through the video. Thank you, Jesus, because you are in the middle of this uh, transmission. Uh, we ask you um, that you could fill our heart from your presence. We we ask you for, I'm sorry for everything that we made wrong for our sins. And we declare that you, you are our Savior and your Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So if you did that pray, uh, please, we want to be in contact with you. We want to keep on walking with you. Uh, please. You could write us here by the chat in YouTube or in Facebook, and you could write us in La Gran Casa Oficial and in Instagram. So please don't leave. We want to enjoy a beautiful time of worship. Stay with us.
So thank again to the van and that wonderful moment that we had to worship God and take that time to think about the, the amazing and wonderful point and, and topic that we are speaking today. So thank you. We, are, we have a, that fantastic time of worship. Yes, always it's so good to be in the presence of the Lord, as we said. And the music, the worship is like a very good staff to, to be in the presence of the Lord. And we want to keep on talking. Um, today, <clears throat> we were talking about this is so important and was the encounter with Jesus. And another part that is so important too, we want to speak about the importance of, of give, of the offering. So if you want to be part of us, in the foundation, in La Gran Casa, in this good church, in this big church, in La Gran Casa. So please, you could feel free. Maybe you could uh, write us by Facebook, by Instagram, and we want to sh uh, share with you the link if you want to uh, give. We have different ways to give. So you you will see in the in the screen. Uh, this is some numbers you could take note and maybe and then you could write to us yes so. and we can tell us too the like a foundation we are working with tiles we are working in the in the neighborhood here in corrientes argentina and all the the that team that we have uh, like the cameras uh, microphone and sound we are working like a foundation with this these tran transmissions and all the transmission that we have during the week. So for that reason, we are talking to you and telling the working that we have, and we made like a foundation, like a church all the week. Yeah, and this is so good to, that we have this platform and to be able to be here. So it's always needed with the person and everything. So. For that reason, if you want to be part of us, you could give. We have different ways, and we could receive it with love and, and with joy. And it's good to remind that in the Bible say that it's so good to give, and it's, it's better give than receive. And another thing that we were talking with the pastor is that God, he bless that person with give, with joy, and with love. So... Thank you one more time for being here with us, for being part of La Gran Casa. This is a foundation. You can find us in, in the channel of YouTube, of La Gran, uh, as La Gran Casa. And you will see everybody that we have all the week. We have the transmission for young, for kids, for makeup. Uh, so last Friday we have for, for health. So we have a lot of things. And um, please don't forget to share the link. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, we are still in contact. Yes, if, if you have uh, answer questions, if you have needs for be praying in the week, don't, don't be shy and write us. You can find us in Instagram and Facebook, like Javier say, and you can contact. Even you can write to in the, in the chat, in the transmission of YouTube. And you can feel free to contact us and... I don't know, just say hello uh, and, and be in contact with us. So we are a big family and you are a part of that. God bless you. God bless you. Goodbye.